One of the most important metrics that you can calculate when you're assessing a particular stock is the equity per share value. In this video, I'm going to share with you how it is that you can calculate the equity per share value effectively right on your spreadsheet for any company that you like. And if you stay until the end, I'm going to share with you how it is that you can perform this calculation automatically and use it so you can find some good investment opportunities. Okay, so the first thing that you need to know about equity equity per share is that it is essentially the same thing as book value per share. The name is just a little bit different, but the formula and the calculation is exactly the same. This is why I wanted to share with you an example so that you could see that book value per share is the same as equity per share. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to walk you through what equity per share is, and we're going to go through a very practical example of applying the formula to calculate the equity per share value. Equity per share or book value per share is a very important number and basically what it allows you to do is think about this when you buy a particular share of a stock you're not buying the whole company but rather a very small percentage of that company and that percentage is determined by the value of the company and the number of shares of the company so the equity per share allows you to see the percentage of the company that you're buying in terms of the total equity that the company has so the formula as you can see for this value is very simple you take the total equity which is reported on the company's balance sheet you subtract any preferred equity if the company has preferred equity and then what you do is you divide that number by the total number of shares outstanding this essentially tells you out of the total equity that the company has how much does that correspond to me because I I'm only buying one share or I want to look at the company on a per share basis. One key use of this metric is to compare the equity per share versus the stock price per share of the company because this allows you to see what is the difference between the two numbers. If you're paying too much for the equity for a particular company relative to its price, then this might be a strong sign that the company may be overvalued. On the other hand, if you're paying a low price compared to the stock price per share that might mean that you're getting a good deal and you're paying a low price for the equity of the company with that being said let's put this into practice and calculate the equity per share value for a very known company and that is going to be microsoft so the first thing that you need to do is to get the company's financial statements get all of these different items so you can apply the formula and calculate this value so let's do this step by step there's different ways in which you can get like each of these different items of the financial statements what i recommend that you do is that you use white sheets and the reason why is because right on excel or google sheets you can just type the company that you're looking to get data for select whether you want annual data or quarterly data and by the way the formula applies exactly the same way if you're looking at annual data versus quarterly data once you do that then all you need to do is click on get data and what's going to happen is that you're going to get the financial growth metrics the key metrics of the company the cash flow the balance sheet and the income statement and all of this let me just zoom in on a historical basis so if i scroll right here you will see how this data goes back to 2004 and there's coverage for even more years after that as well so you really have a lot of flexibility because the equity per share value is something that can be calculated on a historical basis so you can look at the value let's say the value was here you can look at it from the 2022 perspective 2021 2020 and the current year and this is something that we're going to get into but first what we're going to do is we're going to calculate it for the current year which is 2022 so the first thing that we're going to need to do to calculate the value is go to the balance sheet and the reason why is because right here on the balance sheet is where you're going to find probably one of the most important values of the calculation which is essentially the total stockholders equity or the shareholders equity if you remember the balance sheet equation is very simple you basically take the total assets and then you subtract your total liabilities and that essentially gives you what is left the assets are benefits or resources that the company has versus the liabilities are obligations that the company has to pay off so when you subtract the difference that basically tells you what you're entitled as a shareholder if 
the company were to liquidate and sell off. So this is a very important number. And once you find it, which you can see it's right here, then all you need to do to calculate this number is very simple. You're gonna take the number, I'm just gonna zoom in. So we're gonna take this number and then we're gonna subtract the preferred number of shares, which in this case, Microsoft does not have preferred shares. So this makes the calculation even simpler. And all we need to do because there's no preferred shares is divided by the number of shares outstanding. So that's something that is typically found on the income statement. So if I click here, you will see that. And as you can see, there's different options that you can look at. So there's the weighted average shares outstanding. Uh, this is the number that I recommend that you do, but you can also use the diluted number, which also takes other share calculations into account, like share options for employees and whatnot. To keep things simple, we're going to use this number, but we could also use this one. So we're going to select this. And now, as you can see on the formula, we're going to take the equity divided by the number of shares outstanding. And this would be the equity per share value for Microsoft at the time that this statements were released. So in this case, we're looking at 2022 as 0630. And because we have set up this formula in Excel, what we can now do is drag it across. So that way we could also get the value on a historical basis and start analyzing where the trend is going in this case we can see that it was lower but it's been growing consistently over time which is a very positive sign for microsoft okay so what i want to share with you now is that rather than you having to calculate this value on a historical basis or a current basis manually every single time for every company that you analyze what you can do is this so if you look at the key metrics you will look to see all of the key metrics that are available and you can access through white sheets formulas. So one of them that we're looking for in this case is the shareholders equity value. That is the specific parameter for this value. So as you can see, this already calculates this value for you. And if you look right here, what you're going to find is that the value is exactly the same as the one that we calculated. Of course, there's some rounding being applied to the numbers, but you get the idea. And this is automatically calculated on a historical basis so if we go back on the balance sheet you will see the numbers are exactly the same and now what we can do is rather than having to calculate this or get the key metrics for every company that you analyze you can set up a template like this where you can compare the equity per share value for multiple companies all at once so as you can see we have a whole bunch of companies and you can find any companies that you like why sheets covers over 50 plus exchanges worldwide and then using the wise function which we have many tutorials on our channel that you can check out. All you need to do is enter the information that's required right here. So first the symbol, then the parameter or the parameters. In this case, we only want to get the shareholders equity. We're going to lock this in so that way we get the same value for every single company. And then we have a period. So for the period, we're going to select 2022, but we can also change it to other different periods. In this case, we're going to go for 2022. We're going to drag this down. Down. And as you can see right here, we're going to get the data for all these companies and we could also get it for the remaining ones. This is just for display purposes. The one thing here that's very interesting is the period. The period that I recommend for looking at companies and comparing them on a real time basis is TTM. And the reason why is because TTM will take the latest value in terms of the latest quarterly statement released for the total stockholders equity. And it will also also take the latest value for the number of shares outstanding. So when you get these values, you're really going to be comparing the current numbers for all of these companies. And this is great because it allows you to more accurately see the value right now in real time. The cool thing about this as well is that if you go on Y sheets, because this number may change all the time due to the number of shares, for example, you can go ahead, click here and all of the data will update for you. So you always Always have the latest values after this what I mentioned to you that is super useful is to be able to compare the equity per share value with the price per share so that way you can analyze whether a stock may be undervalued overvalued or just simply be able to tell if you should do more research on that particular company for that we're going to enter price and now we're going to use a slightly different function. So in this case, we're going to use the wise price function. Here you can see it's asking us for the symbols. So in this case, we're going to select all these different symbols. Now it's asking for a parameter or parameters. In this case, we're going to select 
price. And once we have this set up, just like that, we're gonna get all of the data at once. So here you can see this is the latest price for all these different companies. Again, you can go on white sheets, update it to make sure you're always looking at the latest price. And now we can really compare one number to another. So one of those metrics is the book value per share or the equity per share multiple. So equity per share multiple we're gonna look at that and this basically tells you how much are you paying per each equity per share so for example let me just give you an example the way you calculate this is super simple you take the price you divide it by the equity per share value and this tells you how many times you're paying that price for that particular stock so for example in this case we can see that the shareholders equity per share value is 28.53 so we're roughly paying 5.4 40 times for that particular stock which actually depends on the industry that you're analyzing but it doesn't seem like a big price premium from what I'm seeing from other companies you can apply this as well to all these different companies that you can see right here and now you can start to look at and see okay which companies are most attractive so for example here this is interesting the price and the equity value per share are almost the same so this could be a really attractive investment opportunity that you might look at same with here the only thing that you do need to keep in mind is that companies that are higher quality usually trade at higher multiples and companies that are lower quality trade at lower multiples so this is where you use this information as a reference and then you go ahead do your own research and then decide for yourself whether or not this particular stocks are undervalued overvalued and what your investment decision is going to be but with this you can find this opportunity a lot faster the last thing that I want to share with you this is based on an article that we wrote on the subject you can see it right here are different factors that may affect the equity per share calculation so one of them is mergers and acquisitions and basically when you merge with another company this can greatly affect the number of shares outstanding for that particular company so keep in mind this because this can really affect the equity per share value same thing with stock repurchases so companies can issue shares or buy back shares so obviously if you issue more shares the equity per share value is going to decrease and the opposite applies dividends here you can see why but basically when you pay dividends to shareholders this also reduces the equity and then the last thing is stock splits so when you split a stock into multiple parts you're basically issuing more stock in a way so this can also really impact the equity per share value now you know everything that is important about the equity per share value so be sure to put this knowledge to use and use it to make good investment decisions for your unique investment portfolio if you've enjoyed this video make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications on so that way you get notified every time we release a new video like this that's gonna allow you to take your investing game to the next level i'll see you in the next one